Okay, let's take a look at some of the basic tools in Photoshop. We're going to start by making a new document, which you can do either under the File menu in New or from within the home screen by hitting Create New. And we're going to make a letter-sized document. And there's a bunch of ways you can get to it. You could input the dimensions here. Let's say we needed 8.5 by 11. We could go to 8.5 by 11 inches. Now, we do want this to be 300 pixels per inch. And there's a faster way to get to some of the more commonly used sizes. Like if you go under print, it'll take you by default to your letter size, which is 8.5 by 11 at 300 pixels per inch. So that's a fast way to get to it. We'll hit create, and there's our new document. And down the left side here, you'll see all your different tools that are available. And this one, the rectangular marquee tool, will let you make a selection. If you click and drag, there's a rectangular selection. But if you click and hold, you'll see that there's a bunch of options in the flyout here. And one of them is the elliptical marquee tool. Now, in the layers panel, right now we just have our background. We're going to make a new transparent layer. So at the bottom right, you'll see there's a little plus sign. If you click on that, that'll make a new layer. And with that elliptical marquee tool, we're going to do a click and a drag. It will just make some kind of an oval sort of shape in there. Now this I'm going to fill with eh, kind of a lightish gray sort of color. So I'll go under edit, fill, and let's tell it we want to use a color. And in the color picker here, if you go anywhere down the left side, we'll get some kind of a shade of gray. The way the color picker works, we've got our hue over here. We've got our hue slider. We can choose whatever hue we want to deal with. We've got our saturation, which is how close to pure the color is. Full saturation on the right, no saturation on the left, and the brightness, full brightness and no brightness. So anything down the left side here will always get you some kind of a shade of gray. So I'm going to do that shade right there. Hit OK. And okay and that fills that layer with that shade of gray now this little dotted line around here sometimes people call this the marching ants it's a marqueed selection and when you have a selection the only place you can do anything is inside the selected area so when i filled you'll notice that it only filled inside the selection now if this is actually a three-dimensional thing kind of floating in space uh, you would imagine there'd be a little bit of shading on it so if i were to grab a paintbrush fast way to get to the paintbrush, you can hit B on the keyboard, or you can pop over to the side and click on your paintbrush. Make sure it's the brush, not a pencil or anything funny like that. And if I were to paint in it now, let's say I grab some black paint and I paint it in here. Ah, well, first off, you can see it can only paint inside the selected area, and that looks terrible. I'm going to undo that. Control Z or Command Z or Edit, step backwards or undo. What if I change the hardness of the brush? You can see right now I have a 125 pixel brush and it's full hardness. If I click on the pop up here, I could bring the hardness down. That would give me a soft edged brush, which is better, but still not great. Um, opacity. What do we think opacity refers to? Well, it's how opaque the image is. There I've painted 100% opacity. If I were to bring that opacity down, say 50% or so, there's a lower opacity. A uh, fast way to change the opacity, if you use the numbers on the keyboard, if I hit zero, there's 100%, five, there's 50, two, there's 20. Uh, what if I only wanted 10%? If I hit one, there's 10%. Now, I'm gonna undo what I did there. Uh, you can go under Edit, Undo, or Command Z. Those will step you backwards through your history states. So Command Z, Command Z undoes the last two things that I did. If you need to do, undo a lot of different things that you've done, Command Z, 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 Z will step you backwards through your history states. You can see there's my 10% opacity brush. It's going to give us a little bit of shading along the bottom. Imagine It's going to give us a little bit of shading along the bottom. Imagine the sun's up here and it's kind of shining downwards this way. You'd expect a little bit of shadowing across the bottom. So I'll just take my paintbrush, my low opacity, and I'll just haze a little bit of a shadow down there. Notice I'm doing a click and a drag. Every time I do another click and a drag, it adds another 10%. So if you want to build that intensity up, you can keep clicking and dragging until you get the darkness that you're looking for. Again, if you go too far, you can always use your command Z, 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 to step backwards through your history states and undo your mistakes. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of shading across there. 
if the light's coming from this direction, I would expect to be a little bit brighter on the top there. Now, right now, you notice that I have black and white down here in the corner. There's my foreground color, and there's my background color. I got the black and the white by clicking this icon. That gets you your default colors, or you can just hit D on the keyboard to get your default colors. Now, if I wanted to put some white up here, I need to get white as my foreground color. I can click these little arrows here, which will reverse my foreground and background colors, or I can simply hit X on the keyboard. That'll do the same thing, reverse my foreground and background. And with some white paint, I can add some highlights to the top there. Yeah, it gives it that nice three-dimensional volumetric sort of look. You can kind of see that roundness in there. Now, if this actually was having light shining on it and it was floating over a surface, you'd probably expect a little bit of a shadow down there. Hmm, because I still have this active selection going, I can't do anything outside of the selection. So I need to get rid of these marching ants. I need to deselect this. And there's a few ways we could do it. I could do a command or control D, or I can go into the select menu and choose deselect. There's my little keyboard shortcut for it. So I'm just gonna deselect, gets rid of those marching ants. And you'll notice now my tools can paint anywhere. When I still have the selection, I can only paint inside. Once I've deselected, I can paint anywhere. Now, if I want this shadow, I'm going to put a little shadow down there. If I want it to be movable, I probably shouldn't do it on the same layer as my oval. In fact, I should probably name my layers. I'm just going to double click on the name layer one here, and I'm going to call this oval because I like to be creative in my naming. So there it is, an oval. And I'm going to make another layer for the shadow. So by clicking that plus, it made another transparent layer, which I'll call shadow. There we go. And if I want, I can put the shadow below the oval. I wish you can change the stacking order of these layers. If you just grab the layer, get that little grabby hand, and I'll throw the oval on top. So now the shadow is down below. You don't have to. They're not going to be overlapping. But if they were going to overlap, you definitely want the shadow to be down below. Now, how can I put a little shadow down there? Well, it would probably be about the same shape as the oval. So I'll just make another oval shape. I can do a click and a drag. Now, when you're making a selection, if you hold down the space bar, you can move that selection around. So if you need to, you know, you need to change the size or whatever, hold space, you can move it, let go of space, you can continue with making that shape. So I'm going to make a little oval down around there, and I'm going to fill it with black. Edit, fill, and for contents, I'll choose black, and I'll hit OK. It's a very sharp-edged shadow, isn't it? Almost like a, like a hard sunlight. But then the shadow across here makes it look like it has a bit of a soft light, almost like a, an overcast day. So I should probably soften up this shadow here. I could give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur. If I went under Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, it will, wait a minute, it's softening the edge, but it's not able to get out past the selection. That's right. When we have a selection, it can only affect the area inside the selection. So I'm going to cancel that and we're going to deselect or command D gets rid of those marching ants. Now look what happens when I go under filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now it can blur outside the selected area and has a nice kind of soft sort of look to it. It's a bit of an intense shadow, so maybe I will bring down the opacity of that layer. Now, the brush opacity was up in the options bar up here. The layer opacity is in the corner over here. Now, we can either type in a new number. I could uh, click on this and I could put 50%. I could click on this little pop-up and we'll get a little slider here. I can play around with the opacity that way. Or, these are what are called scrubby. If I hover over the word opacity, see I get the finger with the two little arrows beside it. And if I click and drag left, or right, I can, whoops, okay, I seem to have my oval layer selected. But anyway, I can click and drag left or right to play with the opacity of my oval layer. Notice how it's highlighted in gray there. If I go to my shadow layer, I can reduce the opacity of my shadow. That's not the only way you could play with the, um, the shadow, you could make the shadow. Another way I could try, if I turn off the eyeball here, that shadow becomes invisible. With this oval layer selected, I could throw on a layer style. Under the FX pop-up here, I know it's not a layer effects, it's a layer style, but I guess style was too big to make an icon of. But anyway, if you click on the effects, you'll see all your layer styles. And if I were to throw on a drop shadow, let me just move this to the side here, uh, we can pull a little shadow out. Now there's a few ways you can play with this shadow. You notice we have distance, which is how far away from the object the shadow is. We have size, which is how soft that shadow is. There's a very hard edge shadow, 
There's a very soft edge shadow. Uh, we have opacity, so we can make it a little bit softer. And we have the angle, which is the angle that the, the light is falling onto the, the object here. And we decided it was coming from the top left here and kind of shining down so the shadow would end up top to the side over here. We can grab the angle and we can spin that around. Now the light's coming from the bottom. Now the light's coming from the top. And again, a fast way of moving the shadow around. When I first started, I just clicked and you can drag this around to move the shadow. And you can actually see the angle and the distance changing as you move that shadow around. So you can play around with the opacity. You can play around with the size. Move it down to here. There, that looks like, ooh, now it's levitating really high above the surface. And when you hit OK, you notice there's no extra layers created. There is the drop shadow right there. This is a layer style. There's the effects, and if we turn off the eyeball on the drop shadow, there it is. So that's another way of making a nice little drop shadow. There's the shadow that we created on a new transparent layer, and there's the drop shadow layer style. Now, when you're ready to save this, we're going to save it as a PSD file, as a Photoshop document. So I'm going to go into, whoa, let me turn the shadow on. There we go. Uh, whichever shadow you want to use, make sure that one's visible, little eyeballs on there, and then we will choose File, Save As, and because it's a lab, we're going to call it Last Name, First Name, Lab 1. I'll just throw that on my desktop for now. And for the format, if you had opened a JPEG or a TIFF, it might default to JPEG or TIFF. Uh, because this one is something we created in Photoshop and it already had some layers, it just assumed the Photoshop format, which gives it the .psd suffix. So if it's a JPEG or a TIFF or anything and you, know, you want a PSD, click on the pop-up there, go to the very top, Photoshop, and when you hit Save, there it is. And that's what you'll be submitting as your lab.